Hello guys, you're welcome back to my channel. My name is Tessie. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you all, depending on where you are watching from. Hope you all are doing well, and thank you so much for stopping by. So, Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria calls on President Muhammad Buhari's federal government to respect international community and release Mazen Namza Kano. Now, this is coming after the UN demanded for the unconditional release of Mazen Namza Kano. And before I go ahead with this news, I'm going to be reading out the article for you guys. But please, if this is your first time watching our video or you've been watching without subscribing, please do us a favor by clicking on the rest of subscribe button down below to subscribe also on the notification button in that way anytime we upload a new video they will notify you and i pray that the same way you all are supporting us here in this channel god will definitely send people that will support you in whatever you are doing in life in jesus name amen this news i read respect international community and release mazin nam the kano huriwa Tess Buhari. The Federal High Court sitting in Oka, Anambra State, Honorable Justice H.A. Nganjiwa of Court No. 1, this week delivered a landmark judgment in a fundamental rights enforcement suit filed in suit number FHC AWK CS 56 2021 between Nam the Kano's legal counsel Ifani Ejio 4 against the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, including the Department of State Services, in which the court said it was unconstitutional the invasion of the country home of the lawyer to the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Mr. Ifani Ejofo, and the extrajudicial execution of his personal assistant in Anambra State. Leading civil rights advocacy group, Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, Huriwa, applauded the judge of the Federal High Court for restoring faith and confidence of the common man in the court of competent jurisdictions as the last hope of the masses, just as the right group has asked President Muhammad Buhari to direct the affected segment of the armed forces whose operative carried out the illegal attempt to kill the lawyer to comply totally to the decision of the court of law. Huriwa warned those indicted security operatives who undertook the brutal and criminal invasion to be identified and judicially sanctioned. Huriwa has also asked President Muhammad Buhari to respect the highly regarded human rights body within the United Nations Secretariat that has reached a determination that the abduction from Kenya of the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra was unconstitutional and amounted to the infliction of physical, psychological, and emotional torture, just as the United Nations body has consequently directed that Nam the Kano, who is being detained under inhuman and treacherously barbaric environment, be freed without further breach of his constitutional guaranteed fundamental human rights. Horiwa said the disrespect pet to this directive means that in 2023 after president muhammad buhari has lost his diplomatic immunity he will inevitably be arrested in any part of the world and dragged before the international criminal court just like east white time war leader charles tyler and prosecuted for these crimes against humanity if his administration faced to remedy them now as instructed by the UN. Citing report from the Federal High Court, the National Coordinator of Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, Huriwa Comrade Emmanuel Omobiku, affirmed that this landmark judgment delivered in the morning of 22nd day of July 2022, the land eroded job heard and consequently declared the brutal invasion of Mr. Ejofor's ancestral home in Orafite on the sixth day of June 2021. The agent of the Nigerian police force, the DSS, and the Nigerian army and Chukwukachi Zoram of Febu oppressive 
and gross violation of his right to life, dignity of human person, fair hearing, right to private and family life, etc. Huriwa said that his lordship further declared as illegal, oppressive and unlawful the taking away and subsequent burning of Mr. Ejofos Toyota Camry car with registration number yab 60 cb together with the corpse of Mr. Samuel Okoro and other vital documents and valuables seized from his house by the agent of the Nigerian police force, the DSS, the Nigerian army, and Chukwu Kachuzorom of Webu. The court further made order and consequently restrained the Nigerian police force, the DSS, the Nigerian army, and Chukwu Kachuzorom of Febu, either directly or through their agent, Previous and whosoever called from further harassing Mr. Ejo for threatening or taking further step in an attempt to terminate his life and or destroying his properties. His lordship further restrained the Nigerian police force, the DSS, the Nigerian army, and Chukwu Kachuzorom of Febu either directly or through their agent previous and whosoever called from further harassing, intimidating, and or threatening to illegally arrest and torture Mr. Ijofo. Besides, Huriwa recalled that the court further rewarded against the Nigerian police force, the DSS, the Nigerian army, and Chukwu Kachuzorom of Ebu jointly and severally the sum of 100 million naira as compensatory and general damages in Mr. Ijofo's favor for the gross violation of his fundamental rights. The court also awarded against the Nigerian police force, the DSS, the Nigerian army, and Chukwu Kachuzorom of Ebu jointly and severally in Mr. Mr. Ejofo's favor, the sum of 5 million naira being the cost of his Toyota Camry car, which they burnt. Also, the court further awarded the sum of 2 million naira being the cost of the suit in favor of Mr. Ejofo. The land judge further directed the Nigerian police force, the DSS, the Nigerian army, and Chukwu Kachuzorom of Ebu to issue public apology in two national dailies for the gross violation of his fundamental rights. In further condemning the dastardly act of the respondent, their agent, his lordship, further directed the inspector general of police, the chief of army staff, and the director general of the DSS to immediately identify their personnel involved in the gruesome act and appropriately sanction them in line with the instant laws. Huriwa record that in summary that on the sixth day of June 2021, being on Sunday at about 2.30 a.m., Mr. Ejofo's peaceful home in Umunoka Ifite or Afite Ekusigo local government area of Anambra State was invaded by the combined team of the Nigerian police force, the DSS, and the Nigerian army, and the civil defense, during which murderous invasion, Mr. Ejofo's personal assistant, Mr. Samuel Okoro, was murdered in cold blood by those monsters in security uniforms. Those monsters did not stop at that. They proceeded to take delivery of Mr. Samuel Okoro's corpse, dumped same in Mr. Ejofo's Toyota Camry car boot, and abducted three of Mr. Ejofo's domestic staff, namely Okafo, Lawrence Ugochuku, Gardner, Felix Okonkwo, driver and Iken Nachibike steward. Before they hurriedly left, Mr. Ejofo's elder brother, Mr. Jue Ejofo, was equally abducted in the process but was later pushed out around Nobi by the invading troops before they left with Mr. Ejofo's domestic staff and the corpse of Mr. Samuel Okoro. Relatedly, Huriwa recalled that the United Nations UN Human Rights Council Working Group on Arbitrary Detention has indicted both Nigeria and Kenya government for the arrest and extraordinary rendition, tortured and continued detention of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, Mazen Nam the Kano, without due process. UN therefore asked the Nigerian government to immediately release Kano unconditionally and pay him adequate compensations for the arbitrary violation of his fundamental 
human rights. It also recommended that government officials responsible for the torture method to the IPOB leader be investigated and punished. The UN body, according to available body of information to Huriwa, further directed Nigeria to report back within six months of the transmission of its opinion on Kano's matter, step taken to comply with all the recommendations thereof. Huriwa quoted the UN body to have referred to the case of Nam the Kano's torture to special rapporteur or torture and other cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment for further consideration. The UN Working Group also threatened to take further action to ensure the recommendations are complied with, noting that both Nigeria and Kenya are signatories to the convention and should comply. The 16-page report dated July 20, 2022 was adopted on April 4th by the Working Group on Arbitrary Detention as its 93rd section held between March 30, April 8, 2022, Huriwa stated. Huriwa has therefore asked President Muhammad Buhari to order the immediate unconditional release of Mr. Nnam Dekanu, who has been detained for a year following his illegal kidnapping by both Nigerian security forces and the security forces of Kenya in nairobi all right my people and that is it for you all it is a very long reading but i just have to take it off for you guys so you can understand it yeah a word they said is enough for the wise if they feel because they are in power today they are untouchable because of that they will defy they will not be in power forever definitely after they finish here their punishment is waiting for them ahead of time. So if they know what is good for them, they should do the needful and release this man because there is nothing this man has done. This man has not done quarter of what the Boko Haram terrorists are doing in the north. One of them was just given a bogus chief tenancy title in the north. This one is a known terrorist. The security forces are not going after him. But here we are. Just a man who is fighting for his freedom, which is his own fundamental human right, they are holding captives for over a year now without nothing, no charges against him. Because as far as I'm concerned, all those things they are saying are just fallacy. So this one now is no longer about the people in Nigeria or the Biafrans. This one, the international community, they've developed interest in this case. And definitely, if they don't do the needful, it will buy fire against them. And that is it for you all. I'm going to leave you all to share your thoughts with me on the comment section. And with that, I will say thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Your love, your support, and effort upon this channel is not taken for granted. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.